Hey folks, David Frost, MyStrategicForecast.com. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis on Friday, December 12, 2014. Lot O action today, lot O market action today. Okay, so here's what we've got. Um, we had a big down day today, obviously. Uh, we had the uh, S&P down 33, the Dow down 315, and the NASDAQ composite down about 55 points. Um, so basically we're getting into the zone where I said we were going to go, right? Um, I said our first target was going to be this pivot high here. And if you look at, and what's that number? Okay. The, the high, this pivot high was, uh, 201, we'll call it 201.90. I kept saying 201.85, but 201.90. Okay. Uh, let's look at an intraday chart. Okay. And let's see what happened at that number. Two, 201.90. Okay, 201.90. We hit it. All right, 201.85, 201.83, in that neighborhood, right? We hit it, bounced, hit it, bounced, hit it, bounced, hit it, bounced up, right? And I thought, in the middle of the day, I thought that that was going to hold, at least for the day, but then it rolled over, okay? So let's go back to the daily chart, all right? And then I said next, next target was going to be uh, probably the 50 period moving average. All right. So 50 period moving average. Where are we? We're just above the 50 period moving average. So what I would expect to happen early next week is we're certainly going to hit this 50 period moving average on Monday in my mind. OK, unless something happens Sunday night and, you know, Monday we open up and that's possible. Um, but my anticipation is we'll hit this 50 period moving average and we'll probably go through it. OK, and if we go through it, um, I would say, and I've been saying, the maximum that I would expect on this move, on this pullback, is a, either this gap window here at about 196 and three quarters, 196.75, let's say, or if we fill the gap at about 196.25, 196, in that neighborhood, right? We don't need to worry about to the penny, just a ballpark figure. So let's say 196 to 196.75 is about the, about the expectation of where I think this pullback can go um, on the downside. Uh, doesn't, I don't know that it'll absolutely get there Monday. I, I don't know, but it could. Monday, Tuesday, that, that's my, that, that would be uh, my anticipation for the end of the downside move would be at most on Tuesday. Why do I say that? Because next week is, is options expiration, and I believe it's a quadruple witching options expiration week. And that being said, you're going to have a lot of whipsaw action. So I would anticipate uh, at, at least... You can get a turnaround on Tuesday, and Tuesday's known as Turnaround Tuesday. Okay, so you can get a down move Monday, maybe a gap down Tuesday, and then a reversal Tuesday, or you might just get an update on Wednesday. We'll see what happens. We'll play it day by day. You don't need to know that now. It's not really important. What's important is where are we going. So we're going at least to the 50 period, and then I would anticipate us going down to this level here. And you see all this chart support here. That's going to provide a good level of support to... Uh, hold up the market in my mind, okay? Um, anyway, all right. So, you know what? I want to pause for a second, and I just want to, uh, before I talk about uh, other markets, I just want to show you something because I never really do this, but I, I think I'm doing myself a disservice if I don't do this. I just want to show you a, um, uh, whoops. I just want to show you, sorry about that. I just want to show you a uh, trade that, um, I did with the members, okay? What? Ah, computers. All right. So what I have here is this was a trade alert that went out. This is exactly what they look like. This goes out in email, okay? Ah, sorry, folks. I'll get it right. So um, this was a trade alert, and basically it says, Action, Sell Short Canadian National Railway, CNI, okay? Now, I give a synopsis on why I thought that was a good bet, and I'll just read a little bit of it. One of the main reasons uh, that the rails have been a strong performer during the gold rush, I called it black gold, and uh, because gold, uh, I'm sorry, uh, oil, uh, black gold is oil, and because oil was pulling back, uh, I saw that the rails were under pressure, and uh, I thought there was further downside to be had. Now, let's look at what happened to CNI, all right? I'll show you exactly where that trade went out. Well, did I give the price in this one? 
Uh, yeah, uh, you can't see it on screen. Let me bring this up a little bit. Uh, let me see if I can. Okay. Here. Current price, 71.05. Okay. And I said short it, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Let's get rid of this. All right. So, so here's CNI. Um, 71.05. This is where I issued the trade alert, and this is the day I issued the trade alert. Okay. What happened the next day? Big down move. Okay. Rallied up a little bit. And then it sold off again, and here's where we are right now. Okay, finished today at uh, finished today on the close. Um, why isn't it giving me? All right, well we'll just use this one. Uh, Sixty four thirty five. Um, where was CNI today? Uh, CNI finished today sixty three fifty six. Okay, close sixty three fifty six. Okay, so. From uh, 7105 to 6356, all right, that's a pretty good move. Uh, I don't know the percentage, what that is. It's, uh, it, it, it looks like to be about 8 or 9%. Anyway, the point is, is that um, probably cover it on Monday. And um, as long as we get a down move on Monday, probably cover it. And uh, basically, I just want to show you that uh, these are the types of trades that I give out to the members that are the members of the subscriber trailers, right? So it, they're, they're normally, um, you know, usually about a week long trade. This one was a little longer. That trade was issued towards the beginning of December. Um, and you can see it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten trading days. Okay. In ten trading days, there was a couple of up days in there, but not many. And, uh, that was a nice little trade. Okay. And that's indicative of most of the trades. They don't all work out. They're never all going to work out. Uh, in fact, uh, nibbled on a little bit of longs this week and maybe it was a little early, but that's okay. I'm not scared of them because I think we're going to get a bounce and an end of the year rally and we'll ride them up. And so, you know, uh, you're a dollar or two out of the money. It's not a big deal, uh, on a percentage basis. It's a couple of percentage points. And, uh, that's just the way this business works, right? We're in the risk business and, um, that's what happens in trades. All right. Let's get back to the market. So I'm going to go back to the IWM for a second. I know we like to look at that as a proxy. And the IWM was weak today. The IWM uh, was down 1.35% or $1.57. And um, basically, uh, you're coming into the 200 period moving average. The 50 is not far below. And, um, you know, same as the SPY, I think your maximum downside move uh, next week would be down in this 111.50 area, right? This this gap window here. Same thing as the SPY. It's really the same day, same chart, same everything. Only this is pretty bullish. So if it doesn't get down there, I would expect this to rally um, a little bit stronger than the S&P would rally uh, when we do begin the rally. Uh, I, and I believe it's going to begin next week. All right, let's get over to oil. And I, I know I'm getting the USO chart out, not the OSO, the USO. OK, but the USO doesn't do us justice because we can't really see the long term on the USO. It doesn't give us the long term chart. And I don't have crude futures on this chart. And I apologize for that. But I'm going to fix that sooner or later. Anyway, um, so basically crude futures finished today at um, 5749. OK, so it was another big down day, three or four percent on crude futures. And um, we're getting into the point where I don't think there's much more downside on this move in crude futures, okay? I originally said 60 was a good level. We'll probably pierce it a little bit. And here we are. We pierced it a little bit. So I'm going to say that about 55, 54 is maximum on the downside for the time being. And then we should reverse back up. And uh, I think last night I showed you the XLE, which is basically a basket of uh, the energy stocks. And <clears throat> let's look at a long-term chart here because we're getting close to a number I told you about last night. And check it out. So what I said last night is you see this area here where this was a breakout where we moved higher and the market's coming right back into that level. So we're getting to the point where I'm getting ready to either buy some stocks that are uh, held within this XLE or maybe just the XLE outright or both. Okay, so uh, on Monday and or Tuesday, when we get a down move, if we get a down move and this moves down another dollar or two, um, that's a buy. Okay, so this is where you take your shot. And uh, where would it go from here? 
Um, I would expect the, uh, let's go to the weekly and I'll show you a better picture of where I would expect it to go. So let's say we get down into this, in this area here, okay, 72, 72 and a half, something like that, right? If we get down to this area, I would expect it to rally back up to the 200 period moving average, which is about 78 and a half, 79, okay? No telling where exactly where it'll be at that time, but it'll be in the ballpark of 78 and a half, 79, okay? Probably 78, 78 and a half, all right? So um, from there, if we get, let's just say 72 is a number, right? Whatever the number is, 71, 72, 73, something like that. Uh, up to 78, let's just call it uh, five, five and a half, maybe even six dollars. Uh, uh, that's another, you know, seven, eight, nine percent move. These are the types of trades I like to take, and I would expect that to happen between next week and the end of the year. Okay, once you get a rally in crude oil. Okay, and you get a rally in the oil stocks, they're so oversold and they're so shorted, there's going to be a lot of short covering and there's going to be a lot of panic buying, if you will, and that's going to drive their price up very, very quickly. So you want to participate in that. All right. What else do I have on the agenda for tonight? Let's talk about uh, gold. All right. Let's look at the GLD. Uh, GLD is acting pretty good. Uh, let's go to the daily chart. Um, GLD was down a little, I'm sorry, gold futures was down a little bit today. I don't remember the exact number. It was down, uh, you know, it really was flat for the day, actually. And GLD was uh, down 28 cents. That's nothing. But here's what you have, right? Keep saying the same thing. Low, higher low, higher low, higher low. And here you go. I mean, once once you uh, put in another few days of, down, of, of sideways uh, to slightly down um, action here, I would expect another pop and your next target is going to be 120 and a half, right? And then after that, your 200 period moving average, your gap window, your gap fill up here. Okay, this area here at 126, 126 and a half. And you're going to keep going. Now, you're not going to go in straight line. It's going to do this. It's going to go up, pull back, go up, pull back, go up, pull back. That's just the way it works. That's the way markets work. Okay, but when you get some of the bigger up moves, okay, you get these twenty, thirty, forty dollar days in gold. That's two, three, four dollars in GLD. Okay, so I see strength in the gold market, and I certainly, and you know why I've been saying the same thing over and over again. The reason why is because you have the central banks trying to create inflation, and that's putting a floor into gold, and it's putting a bid under gold, and I think that continues into two thousand fifteen. OK, so uh, my take on gold hasn't changed. And uh, that's about it on that. So one more thing I wanted to discuss tonight, which is the um, the VIX. And where is my VIX chart? OK, here it is. VIX. Whoop. OK, so here's the VIX. All right. So yesterday. I told you that um, the target, a good target for the VIX was this this gap window here, which was at 22, okay. And today we came up to 23, okay. So uh, overshoot a little bit, but that's not out of the ordinary. But then what happened? We pulled back. So th that tells me that this is a good level of resistance. And next week, if we get in a, a, a down day on Monday and or Tuesday, um, you can probably fill this gap at 25, which is pretty much up there. And then uh, I would expect a pullback in the VIX. But you watch the VIX. The VIX will normally move before the market moves. So for example, it, what's interesting is think about it. The market sold off into the close today, right? Let's just take a look at the SPY. And this is important, right? So SPY, talking and typing. All right. Um, the market, let's look at an intraday, okay? That's 15 minute. Let's look at the 10 minute, all right? Look what happened, all right? You cratered at the end of the day, right? This is uh, basically the last, let's call it the last hour of the day. You cratered, all right? So the market sold off really, really good into the end of the day. There was a little bit of panic selling. And what happened on the VIX, okay? On the VIX, this is a 10 minute chart of the VIX, okay? All of a sudden, on the last candle of the day, you hit that high, but then you sold off. Well, either that's telling you that we're probably going to open up on Monday, or the VIX hit its you know maximum extension, if you will, for the time being, 
and uh, the market's poised to uh, begin a rally. Now, that could be off by your day or two, and the VIX is normally a tell of what's to come in the stock market. It's the fear index, but what it really is, it's, it's signifying the option put buying or the put buying in the options market. Okay, so when folks buy protection in the form of puts against stocks or against the index, right, um, this is telling you how much they're buying, essentially. It's really nothing more than that. And I just found it interesting that the VIX sold off into the end of the day in the market. I'm sorry. Yeah, the VIX sold off into the day, in the end of the day, and so did the market, and they, they normally work opposite each other. So uh, that's just telling me something. Anyway... Um, that's it for today, folks. I think um, we're getting close to a bottom here, so we're getting close to a buy level for the end of the year. And uh, don't get panicked out of the market. Don't listen to the talking heads. Nobody knows what they're talking about. Uh, they just tell you what's going on that day, and they get bullish or bearish based on what's happening that day in the market. So uh, take it with a grain of salt, whatever they tell you on TV. I'm David Frost, MyStrategicForecast.com. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.